Hello, today we have more ELRS products or Express LRS. This one comes from the manufacturer Namimno, which I really hope I'm saying it right. This is a module called the Flash. There is another one from Namimno, which I have real trouble saying, called the Voyager. The Voyager is the 868 or 915 version. The Flash is the 2.4 gig version. Um, comes in this little box here, and I've got various little envelopes of bits and pieces. I'll just show you this first off, because there's some quite nice things about it. Firstly, you'll see it's the JR compatible module. The second thing you might notice is this is a fan unit here, so it's got its own cooling. In many cases, Express LRS modules can go to quite a high power, but they will need extra cooling. This one's already got it built in. You can also add external power here through this XT30, and it takes 6.5 to 13 volts. There's a UR interface here with uh, ground, RX, TX, and voltage pins. Um, and obviously, we've got an antenna to put on. That comes in one of these packets. This is the package you can buy where you get free receivers. And within that, I've got this thing called the Black Pearl Antenna, which looks like a quite small 2.4 Moxan antenna, which goes on obviously like so. Pretty dinky. And then we've got the free receivers in there, one of which has a sort of PCB antenna, so there's nothing sort of physical coming out. Very good for very small models or whoops and stuff like that. The other two have antennas. Let's go to close up and we'll have a look at those in more detail. Okay then, so here's just a close up of the module and you can see that's the little UR interface there. There's the XT30, here's the whole fan unit. But uh, here's the, the guts of what the package is and we got three of these. Two of them are receivers like that. One of them just has the ceramic antenna. And here's what you get in the package. Here's one of the receivers. And you can see the markings there for receive, transmit, voltage and ground. You've got a button there. You've got the UFL connector for the antenna. So the antenna cable is quite long compared to the actual receiver itself. Got some heat shrink, which you probably can't see because it's see-through. And you've got four separate cables. Normally these are sort of twisted together. It's a bit weird to see them like that. And when you put the antenna on it, it looks a bit like this. I, I, you know, I could have done with a slightly shorter antenna. This is pretty big, but of course you can always twizzle that round the other way to lose a little bit of length to it. And this is the one with the ceramic antenna. You can see this is the antenna instead of that UFL connector. It's literally just got this little thing, which is really interesting. Um, interesting to know what sort of range you get out of that. Obviously the range is reduced, but I don't think it's too bad from what I hear. And you can, of course, tuck this into a model and basically not see anything uh, externally, which is pretty nice. So here's the module installed and we've got a, a light on. There's no documentation with any of this stuff. And right now the Namimno website goes to a, a sort of a bad response, which is not great. Cause you know, you, you like to know if there's Wi-Fi available on these things. I did mention the beta FPV review that I check this for Wi-Fi and it doesn't work and I talked to the Namimno people and they said oh no that's it's on a different ship but but just to clarify there if we go in and, and run the Lua script on it uh, we've got the power set right down at the moment because these things will take a lot of power from your radio if you run it at full whack I haven't checked what the that hash is whether it actually relates to something because I want to flash these anyway with my bind phrase but if i go and try and put that into wi-fi update it doesn't do anything it's just like nope so what i want to do is update this and i think uh, of my one communication with the namimno people they suggested i could update it through the radio um, so can i flash an elrs file via the radio and not have to use that just basically have it plugged in. So uh, yeah, I'm going to test it out now and see what happens. Okay, so here we are in the Express LRS configurator. I'm using the latest 101 again. And helpfully enough, we've got the Namino stuff. Oh, I can't get used to trying to say that. It feels like I'm just muttering. Namimno, uh, we're using the, the Flash. That's the 2.4, as I said, the Voyager is the 900 series. And my target for this is going to be the TX via ST-Link because what I know is it's not Wi-Fi and ST-Link is the other option. This is pretty much the same as I would do the 868. The, the only difference is you've only got a single regulatory domain because otherwise you'd have 868915, this is 2400. I got my normal binding phrase and I want my telemetry on and that is about it. So let's go ahead and build that. 
Now I have built this once before, so I'm hoping the build process should be pretty quick this time. It's not staggeringly quick, whatever you do, but it's, you know, oh, that's pretty quick, wasn't it? So that has now created this ELRS file. What I'm going to do is plug my radio in uh, so I can see my SD card helpfully comes up as no name there. So I'm going to take the ELRS file, drag it to no name, and then I've got my own firmware thing. I'm going to shove that in there, although looking at how OpenTX likes long names, it, it generally doesn't. So let's call it the the NAM 101. And let's see if we can write that via the radio. We're back for the flashing, and one thing you might notice is I've got a battery stuck in the back. And this is because it's happened several times now, and I thought the first time May was just loud battery but the radio just literally turned itself off. And as you can see, it's got 7.7 .7 volts. If I take the module out, it's fine. If I had the module running in there, it would just completely power down, even though it's running in just 25 milliwatts, according to what it says. Anyway, let's see if this thing will flash, see what happens. So what I want to do is not go there. Oh, here we go. If I go to my firmware, and what happens if I try and flash this? It says flash external ELRS, which sounds good. Device reset. It beeps what's happening at the back. Firmware update error, no sync exit. Ooh, that doesn't sound good, does it? Okay, this is pretty weird. So when that failed, I turned once again to the very helpful Discord community and ask what they were talking about and what this backpack is because the person at Namimno answered me and said it's got a backpack it's slightly difficult so therefore use this radio method and the radio method didn't work and I said what is this backpack and they said you need to connect to the ESP32 Wi-Fi manager and then you put your home Wi-Fi details in so the module basically jumps onto your home network and I was like how do you get to that because I hadn't seen anything and then what he said is there's a network comes up called ESP Wi-Fi Manager and this was just lost in the deluge of other Wi-Fi networks around me. So as soon as I connected to that, you can then see this ESP Wi-Fi Manager and then you can go ahead and configure Wi-Fi. And what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and, well, hopefully it's gonna find my network and I can basically put my password in, there it is. And um, then we can connect to this. Okay, so then we save that. Once that's set up, we can go to elrs underscore tx dot local, flips off the tongue, doesn't it? And look, we finally get the page up. And from here, we can update um, both the main firmware here and the Wi-Fi backpack firmware, which is what we're actually doing to upload this thing. So let's get the firmware dot bin file we created earlier, drag it over to here, and upload and flash it and see what happens well that's handy it does a nice little uh, thing here about what's happening which is good update is successful well let's go and have a look so although the flashing said it went successfully here's what we get the Lua script doesn't seem to do anything and on the back of the module, we've got zero lights gone. So that can't be good, can it? Although this seems to be in line with what a few other people have said about trying to flash this via Wi-Fi. Well, it took about two days, but look, the module's back in the land of the living and we've actually got decent info from the Lua script there. So what had happened? And uh, I alluded to some people finding other problems as well. So I had a look at the Discord when I was looking for the backpack thing because I was confused about what Namibno meant by there's a backpack. What's that mean? That's when I found out about it. And I also found out that a few people had flashed it successfully, but for a few people it had come run into problems. One of those people was Fubar Phil. You might know him from a video he was recently in with Andy RC, who was looking at the Namibno stuff. And he had flashed it through Wi-Fi the same way that I did, hit the sort of the, the what we'd call a soft bricking problem but what he did is to flash back the original git um, commit 
that was on the radio originally and it sort of brought it back to life. I tried that. That was on um, release candidate 8 of version 1, by the way, when I checked it back. But I wrote that back and it was it was still not working for me. Other people as well managed to do the ELRS flash via the radio. So I don't know if this is down to the, the unit here or the radio or the version of OpenTX about why that's not working. A few other useful things I discovered from talking to people uh, via Discord, because I turned to Discord as soon as this went wrong, and I've got a, a huge thanks to a, a people a lot of time I took up, uh, people like Deadbite, Stone Dog, and Alessandro, really helpful and uh, sorted me out in the end, but it took a while to get there. But through that, I found out that when you power the radio up, that Wi Fi is always on and it will connect to your home network, and that means that when you try and flash the firmware, you wouldn't necessarily have to go to use that web page and drop the files in. If you do the build and flash, it will attempt to connect to that URL and drop the firmware in there. What the problem was is when you do the flash, when you drop a firmware file on there, it comes up with this little hex address, which we assume to be zero, sort of right on the first location. What the firmware was doing there is overwriting the bootloader. So at that point, it was like, it was gone. The, the, the code that could run there and, and do the whole ELRS stuff had been over overwritten by it. The Wi-Fi, backpack uh, is a completely separate chip so it keeps running so you can at least keep writing firmware and what I also found out is this UART here the, this is uh, an ST-Link just for the Wi-Fi backpack the actual ST-Link connector you'd need is actually inside there so you'd need to take this off solder pins up and use an ST-Link to actually do that in some other way USB connection anybody that would be quite useful wouldn't it anyway so what Alessandro sent me uh, a couple of nights ago was the original firmware file to flash back onto the box but then we came across the problem we did some sort of file name verification and wouldn't accept that the solution came by getting the bootloader renaming it to firmware flashing that and then getting the actual ELS firmware and flashing that to location 0x4000 from that we got a working system but my goodness that took some effort now there's fixes going into the ELRS repository to make it so people can't wipe over their bootloader I think with the normal chipset the bootloader and firmware is all one thing so you just write it and it goes I think it's because the bootloader and the firmware for ELRS are separated that you can actually wipe it out on on this case so that's being fixed it would seem useful though you know there's an element of this which is in Express LRS's camp, but there's a sort of larger element that like Nimimno needs to step up with their documentation because there is none. You, you know, you need to know that this uh, Wi-Fi is a backpack and then writing to me saying, oh, it's complicated, used, <laughs> used to radio flashing, doesn't explain very much about how you'd set that up. And, you know, it's not difficult to do. As soon as you set it up, it, it, you can happily flash to it. But, yeah documentation it's it's not all on express rs's shoulders to, to to make it work on every single manufacturer they need to do some documentation for themselves especially in the mimno because there's absolute zero out there for any of it um it's all kind of like oh you figure it out talk to people on discord and stuff so that really needs to be improved hopefully that won't happen to you you'll be able to flash it one way or the other and that fix will go in. The reason I want to show all these problems I'm having is of course if anybody hits them, here's how to solve it. Just do what I've done and uh, you'll get out of it. But hopefully by the time you see that, uh, the code will be updated and it will all be good. Anyway, with that working, let's see if we can flash the firmware onto receivers. Fingers crossed this is easier than uh, the module. So what I've done to test if the receivers will flash is I've just wired two of them up from one side. So I've got one with the antenna and one with the ceramic antenna. And I've just connected up the five volt and ground to an ESC here, just to supply voltage. And the reason for this is firstly, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put these on yet. And secondly, I kind of need something just for doing the flashing. Cause a lot of the time it's gonna be like, oh, I've got a receiver, let's get it flashed. So I don't have to think about it. I can just install it. So having something simple that I can just turn on so I can flash this is quite handy. Anyway, let's plug a battery in and see if it sort of times out after 20 seconds and goes into Wi-Fi mode. Okay, we're powered on with this uh, little free battery. That is doing its normal flash at the moment. The default seems to be around 20 seconds before it enters its Wi-Fi mode, so let's hope this does the same. 
How long has it been? I don't know. It feels like a long time, doesn't it? Listening to this. What's it going to do? Come on. You can do it. Feels like more than 20 seconds now. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. So look, we have got a Wi-Fi network. Yay. So as far as the receiver flashing goes, obviously I'm doing this via Wi-Fi. And the rest seems pretty much the same as what I'd normally have keeping that auto Wi-Fi on. So let's do a build there. At this point, I am joined to the Wi-Fi network for the receiver. So I'm ready to basically just drop that firmware file there and let's hope for the best. Okay, that's done and it's created that binary file there. So I'm gonna take that binary file and I'm gonna drop it over there and then I'm going to hit update. Update success, rebooting. Okay, nice, good, solid light there. We're all bound up on the radio. Seems to have gone blue. All good. Once again, flashing receivers seems an awful lot easier than flashing the modules. Okay, well, I'm going to call this video quits here for now at the moment. And there's two reasons for that. First off, I can't go out at the moment. Uh, and I probably will struggle to go out uh, in the next few weeks or so, but find out more why by clicking on that video. The other thing is, I know there's quite a lot of buzz about this module because it's got the built-in fan and it can do high power, and I know a lot of people might be interested in it, so I wanted to get this out so they could see if they had the same problems. This is how I've resolved it, and hopefully some more of that will be resolved. One interesting fact is, I mentioned I still can't flash ELRS from the radio, but when you do um, a Wi-Fi flash and build, it actually pushes the ELRS over the, the link. And I noticed since updating and going and, and doing the, the bootload in the firmware, I can actually do an update via Wi-Fi uh, that way. So it's like a single click and it just works, which is interesting. I don't know why that is. I'll have to find out more about that. I should also say that you saw me using an external LiPo in this one because it seemed to be draining the batteries. The batteries in this radio are bad. I'm using these Ultrafire and you can tell they're bad because they're labelled as high discharge and 9,990 milliamp hours which is clearly rubbish. So these are utterly utterly rubbish batteries. That said it doesn't have a problem powering the crossfire unit. I've used it with Ghost. That's fine. It's only when I put this in it drained the power straight away. So clearly there is some extra power requirements on there though I would suspect if I was using you know decent uh, cell batteries in there, it would probably be okay. I can also suggest to Namimno that A, you get a website that works, B, documentation please, and C, could you give us bigger heat shrinks? I could barely get this one over the antenna. This one would not fit over the ceramic antenna. I had to cut bits away in order to make it fit. Small detail, but it's all uh, useful. Anyway, this was kindly, this and these, was supplied by Banggood for review, so thanks very much to Banggood. And um, you can obviously find details down below for where you can order these. Obviously, I will be back and I will be using this uh, and doing some range testing for these guys. Um, my idea is this is probably going to go into something toothpicky that I can fly outdoors um, around the trees and that sort of thing because I'm not looking for ultra range, but you know much further beyond SPI and like a regular receiver. So I'm really interested to see how that is because obviously you can tuck it away inside. This one on a, a bigger quad to see how this works. This looks like a sort of proper 2.4 antenna. So we should get a decent range out of this one. And it'd be really interesting to see how it works and what sort of uh, RSSI or link quality drop we get when taking things a bit further. So tune into those ones when they happen. And the other thing I want to do, of course, is use a different type of receiver with this module. Now I've got a 2.4 module and an 868 module. I have, for example, this Happy Model PP receiver, which should work fine with this uh, Namimno. But we'll find out about that when I come back. Anyway, hope that's been helpful and I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.